Welcome to this spoiler-free character discussion for the Wheel of Time TV series on Amazon Prime. In this series of videos, I'm going to introduce you to some important characters who have been cast in the Wheel of Time TV show, but without revealing plot points or any other major spoilers. This is for anyone who wants to know if the Wheel of Time TV or book series is for you, or anyone who wants a little bit more background to help you understand it as you're getting into the series. It's also for anyone who wants a little bit more information about the actors who have been cast in the major roles. Just to clarify, I'm going to give a little general background on each character, focusing on things we learn about the characters early on in the book series. If you are someone who is totally spoiler averse and likes to go into a series knowing absolutely nothing ahead of time, these videos might not be for you. I definitely won't spoil any plot points and anything that we don't learn about a character very early on, I will also avoid. First up is the character who will be the central focus of the Wheel of Time TV series, at least to begin with. Later on, other characters do grow to more prominence, but early on, we're going to be focused on Moraine, who will be played by Rosamund Pike. Moraine is a woman on a mission, having dedicated her life to fighting a growing threat from the force of evil in the world, known as the Dark One. When she finds out that the Dark One is interested in one or more young people from a tiny isolated village, in a region called the Two Rivers. She travels there with support only from her warder, Lan, who we will talk about next. Even though she is nearly alone in this mission, she is far from defenseless. We quickly learn that Moraine is an Aes Sedai, a member of a group of highly trained female magic users. In order to start to understand Moraine, we have to have a little bit more background on Aes Sedai and their abilities. The magic that they use is known as the One Power or the True Source. And something unique about this series is that the power is divided into two halves, which are considered male and female. So for women who can channel, they have access to the half of the source known as Saidar. Men who could channel would use the half known as Saidin. The problem has been that for thousands of years, Saidin has been unsafe to use, leading to madness and destruction. For this reason, Aes Sedai are only women, and they consider part of their mission to seek out and neutralize men who can channel by cutting off their access to Saidin. Men who can channel are feared and loathed. There's a lot more to learn here, but I want to get back to Moraine for now. So Moraine is an Aes Sedai, and very little is known of them throughout the world, most of which is fairly isolated after a cataclysmic event thousands of years before. Aes Sedai have a reputation for wielding power politically, and Moraine is particularly skilled in this way. Aes Sedai are generally respected, but not trusted, and Moraine is no exception. A little aside here, but... Readers of the books tend to be very opinionated about Aes Sedai in general, one way or another. And for me personally, I think it's important that we don't get stuck on the idea that all Aes Sedai are the same. Through Moraine, we do come to understand what it means to be a typical Aes Sedai, both in the way she's typical and the way she's not. But you'll definitely see that Moraine, at least, is very much an individual and that not all Aes Sedai are the same. As I said, Moraine has this mission that she's dedicated to, which involves the young people from the two rivers. And the books don't reveal to us right away exactly what this mission is. Her motivations are questioned, and because the books don't give us her POVs right away, she remains mysterious. We know she's up to something, but what? Should we trust her or should we not? You gotta love this kind of character. Her manner is cool and reserved. She always appears poised and in control and more knowledgeable than she necessarily reveals. Part of this is her Aes Sedai training and part of it is her cultural upbringing. But slowly learning what lies beneath Maureen's exterior is what makes her such a fascinating character. Now, who is Rosamund Pike, the actress who will be portraying Maureen? If you are familiar with anyone in the cast of The Wheel of Time, it is probably Pike. She is providing the star power. Her name alone is enough to justify the assumption that Moraine will be a central focus of the TV show. And early press releases that describe the show also clearly put the focus on Moraine. Although the books don't give her early POVs in order to facilitate this mystery of her character, 
the show will be able to accomplish that in other ways while still featuring her character prominently. Pike is perhaps best known for Gone Girl, for which she was nominated for an Oscar as well as numerous other awards. I also thought she was perfect for her role as Jane Bennett in Pride and Prejudice. Without getting into spoilers, these two prominent roles are very different characters, and that shows her range as an actress, which will be very valuable in this role. The showrunner Rafe Judkins clearly believes he has found his perfect Moraine, and he had this to say about her casting. Also, as a fan, my conversations with Rosamond about who Moraine is, where she comes from, what drives her, have been genuinely one of the great privileges of my career. She understands this character in her bones, and I get chills thinking about the day she'll bring her to life. Let's move on and talk some more about the character of Lan, who will be portrayed by Daniel Henney. Lan, more than any other character in the series, is tied to Moraine. He is her warder, which means he has the sworn duty to protect her life and uphold her mission. They have a literal bond as Warder and Aes Sedai, which involves the One Power. We don't initially understand everything about this bond, parts of which are a closely guarded secret. But both of them receive some benefits and enhanced abilities, though it's not without some risk. Lan was already a highly skilled swordsman when he met Moraine, and his tracking abilities are also perhaps second to none. Lan says little and observes everything. Both he and Moraine did not enter into their bond lightly, and perhaps neither of them would have chosen to do so with any other person. Lan is dedicated to Moraine above all else and would literally die to defend her or her mission. He is also, like Moraine, a layered character that we only see the surface of initially. This allows for one of my favorite features of this character, which is when you occasionally get these tiny glimpses of his really surprising sense of humor or other sides that you just don't see initially revealed with his stone-faced exterior. There are some other aspects of Lan's backstory that really make the character who he is, but I'm going to avoid going into specifics because a lot of these details aren't revealed until later in book one. Generally speaking though, Lan sees himself as someone who was without a home at the beginning of the series. Where he was born and what he was raised to do versus what he spends his life doing now play into this, and he has walled himself off from most people as a result. A quote that really sums up a lot about his worldview is, death is lighter than a feather, duty heavier than a mountain. Lan isn't someone who seeks out death exactly, but he isn't afraid of it either. And in many ways, he sees himself as wed to death and duty. Now let's introduce Daniel Henney, the actor who will be playing Lan. You might be familiar with him from Criminal Minds or as the voice of Tadashi from Big Hero 6. He has also had supporting roles in movies such as X-Men Origins Wolverine and The Last Stand. Henny himself is more active on social media than some, and that gives us a tiny glimpse into how much training he is likely doing for this role. It definitely seems like he is going to be able to pull off the action aspects of playing Lan. Rafe Judkins also had this to say about the casting. Daniel Henny is Al Lan Mundragoran. He was who I saw in my mind from the first moment I started writing. I hope I have piqued your interest in these two incredible characters and that you want to find out more. I will continue to make these videos for the other major characters. Next up will be two videos to cover the five young core characters from The Two Rivers. And I will continue on with others as more castings are announced. If you're a book lover, the 14-book epic fantasy series by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson is completed and ready for you to pick up, starting with book one, The Eye of the World. And the TV series started filming in September 2019, with a potential release date sometime in 2020 or possibly 2021. There will be more to come, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more Wheel of Time content. See you next time.